broken down the sequence of a virus as quickly as we have corona. That's because of freedom. And when we get the vaccine, and we will, when we get greater treatments and we are developing them, nobody in the mob and the media will point out the study that said, yeah, take it early. Yeah, hydroxychloroquine, along with azithromycin and zinc, it really works. And it cut the death rate, if I remember what, by 50%. Take it early, not the VA study, which was a retro study, which gave people that were literally days away from dying. Here, let's throw this at them, see if it works. Too late by that. So, and then we have remdesivir, and a lot of hope that that might bring. I'm not a doctor, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you, I am saying that I'm all for the mask wearing. I'm all for the social distancing, and it's only a short period of time, and anything that's going to allow our, our, the protection of older Americans, the one thing that has remained constant is that older Americans with underlying conditions and compromised immune systems are the most vulnerable to dying. Are there exceptions? Yes, there are. Do you want to, do you want to test this out? Uh, I wouldn't test any, I, I wouldn't mess around with any virus, of course not. But if I can go to a baseball game and I have to wear a mask, I'm all in. Or an outdoor concert, I'm all in. Or a political rally, I'm all in. Uh, or a football game in the fall, I'm all in for that too. You know, why can't we move uh, the NBA and put them in outdoor stadiums? You know what, it adds a whole new component to playing the game. You know, I love watching the most talented, gifted athletes do what they do, and then to maybe watch them adapt to conditions that they don't have to adapt to indoors, that would add a pretty, pretty fascinating component to the NBA. I'd love to see that. So, um, we now have a moment, and I am telling you, if these policies of these Democrats, this is now like they're running as a team. He got by, I don't know, what, he's going to choose Kamala Harris. That's, I guess, my best guess at this point. Okay, then you've got, who is he listening to the most? Bernie Sanders, the most radical, extremist socialist in the country. He's not only adopting his policies, he's plagiarizing on the exact wording from Bernie's plans. Then he's got AOC, then he's got Pelosi and Schubert, the three of them, 125 combined years of failure. Anyway, it's all in Live Free or Die. It's on Hannity.com. It's great to get to announce our plans uh, with the book launch and things that we're going to be doing. And some things are different, obviously, because of Corona. We don't want to put anybody at risk. And uh, we're, we're keeping safety in mind with all of our planning. I hope to see a lot of you. Looking forward to what the conventions might be. I might actually get a break this year. If the Democrats don't have a convention, I won't have to go. Usually I'm stuck going. Not that fun. Uh, I've walked the floor of the convention of the Democrats. I'm not exactly loved in that environment. I'm usually surrounded by a lot of guys. And I don't have security as a, as a, on a day-to-day -day basis like other people. Well, Hannity, you shouldn't say that. Well, I have my own security, and I'm pretty comfortable defending myself. But this is, you know, this is, what do you want this country to be? What country has done more with liberty and freedom? As imperfect as any country is, because human beings aren't perfect. You know, we can become a more perfect union. We've proven we can become more perfect. You know, we had, you know, an, a civil war, an emancipation proclamation. We had a civil rights act. We have a voting rights act. I know the mentors of Joe Biden, Schumer, Pelosi, Hillary, and Bill, they are out there filibustering those historic bills by 80 plus percent of Republicans in the House and Senate were, were supporting them. Nobody wants to hear about that real history lesson. But we'll tell it. But righting wrongs, correcting injustices, that's the beauty of our constitutional system of governance, which is our foundational rule of law. And if we use it even more today to make more strides and become a more perfect union, we're capable, there's nothing that we can't be capable of. You know, uh, interesting, Barry Weiss, this is not a conservative, writing the, um, about the New York Times a resignation letter. I joined the paper with gratitude, optimism, three years ago. I'm tired with the goal of bringing 
and voices that would not otherwise appear in your pages, first-time writers, centrist, conservatives, others who not naturally think of the Times as their home. The reason for this effort was clear. The paper's failure to anticipate the outcome of the 2016 election meant it didn't have a firm grasp of the country that it covers. What's his name? Dean Burkett? Is that how you say the guy's name? And others have admitted on uh, as much on various occasions the priority and opinion was to help redress that critical shortcoming. I was honored to be a part of that effort, led by James Bennett. I'm proud of my work as a writer and as an editor. Among those that I help bring to our pages, he starts giving a long list of people varying political points of view. And, uh, you know, writes that I'm resigning from the New York Times. The lessons that ought to have followed the election of 2016, lessons about the importance of understanding other Americans, the necessity of resisting...